Hello everyone. I am Hera Khan and I have prepared this topic that is Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exclusively for IDToolsTraining.com. This course will provide foundational level knowledge of cloud services and how those services are provided with Microsoft Azure. The course can be taken as an optional first step in learning about cloud services and Microsoft Azure before taking any further Microsoft Azure or Microsoft Cloud services courses. In this course, you will learn how to understand general cloud computing concepts, understand core services available with Microsoft Azure, you'll be able to understand security, privacy, compliance and trust with Microsoft Azure and you'll be able to understand pricing and support models available with Microsoft Azure. So within the course agenda, when we will be discussing uh, cloud concepts, we'll be able to def dis define and describe the benefits and considerations of using cloud services. So we'll be understanding terms such as high availability, elasticity, agility, fault tolerance and disaster recovery. We will be able to understand the principles of economies of scale, understand the difference between capital expenditure and operational expenditure, understand consumption based models. We'll be able to describe the difference between infrastructure as a service cloud, platform as a service cloud, and software as a service cloud. So we'll be able to compare and contrast the three different service types. Then we will be able to describe the difference between public cloud, private, and hybrid cloud models. The next topic which is covered in this particular course is core Azure services. So we'll be getting a flavor of all of the different types of core Azure services. So we'll be starting uh, with understanding the architectural components of Azure. So understanding how regions are separated, what is an availability zone, what is a resource group, uh, what is an Azure resource manager. Describe the benefits and usage of all these different types of core Azure architectural components. Then we'll be uh, discussing about some of the core products available in Azure. So we'll be describing products which are available for compute, such as virtual machines, virtual machine scale sets, app service, and functions. Furthermore, we'll be describing products which are available for networking, such as virtual network, load balancer, VPN gateway, application gateway, and content delivery network. We'll move on to further also explore uh, storage services such as blob storage, disk storage, file storage and archive storage and then uh, move on to just you know understand uh, various databases which are available on the Azure platform such as Cosmos DB. Uh, you have your usual Azure SQL database which we all are very familiar with. Then you have your Azure database migration service and Azure SQL Data Warehouse for big data services. And then finally, we'll be talking about Azure Marketplace and its usage. After we have understood core Azure services and products, we'll go on to understand Azure solutions. What are some of the solutions which are available on the Azure platform? So we'll be describing Internet of Things, and products that are available for IoT on Azure such as IoT Fundamentals, IoT Hub and IoT Central. We'll be describing big data and analytics and the products that are available for big data and analytics such as SQL Data Warehouse, HD Inside and Data Lake Analytics. We'll be describing artificial intelligence and products that are available for AI such as Azure Machine Learning Service and Studio. And we'll be also describing serverless computing and Azure products that are available for serverless computing, such as Azure Functions, Logic Apps, and AppGrade. And then finally, we'll be describing the benefits and outcomes of using these Azure solutions. 
Furthermore, after we have discussed about core architectural components, service and products as your solutions, we'll be understanding Azure management tools. So we'll be understanding Azure tools such as Azure command line interface, PowerShell and Azure portal. And then we'll also uh, explore Azure advisor as one of the solutions available under management tools. After we have, you know, completed the second module that is Core Azure Services, we'll move on to the third module which talks about security, privacy, compliance and trust. So, we will, under this particular topic, understand how securing network connectivity is possible in Azure, wherein we'll be describing Azure Firewall, Azure DDoS protection, network security group, and how and where should we choose which type of an appropriate Azure security solutions. Furthermore, we'll be describing core Azure identity services, within which we'll be understanding the difference between authentication and authorization. We'll be describing Azure Active Directory and Azure Multi-Factor Authentication. Then we'll be describing various security tools and features available on Azure, like Azure Security, Azure Security Center Usage Scenarios, Key Vault, Azure Information Protection, and Azure Advanced Threat Protection. Furthermore, we'll move forward and talk about Azure Governance Methodologies. So we'll be describing Azure policies, initiatives, role-based access control. Uh, there is a lock capability also available on the Azure pl platform. And then you have Azure Advisor Security Assistance available. After we have uh, talked about Azure governance methodologies, we'll be understanding monitoring and support options in Azure, within which we'll be talking about Azure Monitor, Azure Service Health, and we'll be understanding the use cases and benefits of Azure Monitor and Azure Service Health. And finally, within this module, we'll be understanding privacy, compliance, and data protection standards in Azure. So we'll understand industry compliance terms such as GDPR, ISO, and IST. Understand Microsoft Privacy Statement. We'll be able to describe the Trust Center. We'll be describing the Service uh, Trust portal. Then we'll be describing the compliance manager. We'll be determining if Azure is compliant for a business need. What are Azure government services and the newest thing that is Azure Germany services. How is Germany uh, utilizing Azure cloud? After we have completed this particular module that is security, privacy, compliance and trust, we'll be moving on to the final module which is understanding Azure pricing and support. Within which we'll be understanding the Azure subscription model. We'll be describing what is an Azure subscription. We'll understand the uses and options with Azure subscription. We'll be understanding planning and management of cost. Understand options for purchasing Azure products and services. Understand options around Azure free account. Factors which affect costs such as resource type, services, locations, in, in, ingress and egress traffic. Understand zones for billing purposes. Understand the pricing calculator. It's a very interesting tool provided by Microsoft wherein you can get an approximate value of the resources that you can create on Azure. We'll understand the total cost of ownership calculator, that is the TCO calculator. We'll understand best practices for minimizing Azure cost, such as performing cost analysis, creating spending limits and quotas, and using tags to identify cost owners. Use Azure reservations, use Azure advisor recommendations. And finally, we'll be talking about how we can describe Azure cost management. Now, within the platform, apart from uh, these different options, you also have to understand the support options which are available with Azure. So if you are uh, working on that particular portal, how will you seek a support system if you are stuck somewhere? So you have to understand the support plans that are available, such as Dev, Standard, Professional, Direct, and Premier. You have to understand how to open a support ticket, understand available support channels outside of support plan channels, and describe the knowledge center. Finally, 
you will be also describing service level agreements and determine SLA for a particular Azure product or service. You also will have to understand the service life cycle in, life cycle in Azure. So you will understand the public and private preview features, understand how to access preview features, understand the term general availability and various monitor feature updates. These are some of the topics which will be covered uh, under each of these modules. So you have understanding core cloud concepts. Then you have the second module which will talk about understanding core Azure services. The third module will talk about understanding security, privacy, compliance and trust. And the fourth module will talk about Azure pricing and support system. Now this course basically provides foundational level knowledge of cloud services and how those services are provided with Microsoft Azure. So this course can actually be taken as an optional first step in learning about cloud services and Azure before taking further Azure Microsoft Cloud Services courses like Azure Infrastructure Services, Developing Azure Solutions, Architecting Azure Solutions, etc. The course will cover general cloud computing concepts in addition to general cloud computing models and services such as public, private and hybrid cloud and infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service models. It will also cover some core Azure services and solutions in addition to key Azure pillar services concerning security, privacy, compliance and trust and finally it will cover pricing and support services available with Azure. The course is intended for a broad range of candidate backgrounds. It is primarily for those candidates who are looking to demonstrate foundational level knowledge of cloud services and how those services are provided with Microsoft Azure. So if someone is very new to the concept of cloud or Microsoft Azure cloud, this is a very suitable course for them to just get started on this particular uh, beautiful uh, cloud topic, which is called as Microsoft Azure. Furthermore, there are no prerequisites required for taking this course. Technical IT experience is not required. However, some general IT knowledge or experience is beneficial. For example, just understanding how networking works, how uh, the, what is a private network, what is a public network, what is an intranet, what is an internet, uh, and different types of networking models. How do you create a network address space? How do you create a subnetwork? These are some of the core concepts that you should have knowledge of. Then uh, some basic knowledge on virtualization, etc. should also be uh, clear so as to take forward this particular course. Now, when you are planning to sit for this exam, that is AZ 900, these are the major areas which will be focused upon that we have already discussed. And as you can see under the weight section, there is a certain percentage which has been assigned to each of these topics. Now, as in when you will start studying each of these topics, you have to make sure that you focus, you provide greater focus on the topics which has more weightage. So understanding cloud concepts will have a 15 to 20% weight in this particular certification exam. Understanding core Azure services is 30 to 35, so it's an important topic. Understanding security, privacy, compliance, and trust also has 30 to 35%, so equally important topic as core Azure services. And understanding Azure pricing and support is at 25 to 30%. So the second and the third topic is the most important. Then you focus more on the fourth topic, and then you go back to the first one which means basically that the number of questions which are being asked in each of these study area will be more so if i if you just focus on understanding cloud concepts you'll only get around 15 to 20 percent questions and you might flunk the exam so you make sure that you provide 
equal and probably extra focus to topics which has greater weightage for the certification exam. Furthermore, there are no labs or structured hands-on components in this course. However, we would encourage and recommend that you sign up for free Microsoft Azure account on the page create your free account today. I will show you how we can browse this particular page and how we can start off with the creation of a free Microsoft Azure account. So with this, we complete the first introduction chapter of Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. The next topic that we'll cover is we will start with module one and we'll learn about cloud concepts. In this particular module, the first thing that we learn is how we can create a free Azure account.